right, everybody. Now it's time for us to watch the video that I said that uh, uh, that we would watch. I want to react to this video because, uh, well, I like I said in my last big drama or discourse segment that I did, um, I I specifically brought up the fact that uh, I want to try and build up uh, left creators who are working very very hard. Uh, to make sure that the discourse stays good. So that's what we're doing right now. All right, everybody, we are going to be reacting to a video titled, Is the Left Failing Men? by a content creator by the name of That Dang Dad. So uh, please, I'm going to link That Dang Dad's channel uh, real quick in the chat. And I would like you all to go shoot some follows and some likes over to That Dang Dad. Uh, we have watched That Dang Dad's uh, videos before, but today we are going to be reacting to the video, Is the Left Failing Men? Uh, let's do it. Let's do this. Hey there, welcome to That Dang Dad. My name is Phil and tonight, we're stepping into the discourse. I didn't wanna to have to do this. I actually have another script about 90% done that I was planning on filming next, but the online left is in shambles right now and there's only one cure, another guy giving his opinions. I anticipate a couple different audiences watching this video. If you're one of my regulars, sit back and relax. You know how I roll. If you're checking me out for the first time, especially if you're on the conservative end of the spectrum, here is my request. Please just watch until the end before you roast me in the comments. I don't make long videos, I try not to be a jerk on here, so hear me out, feel free to disagree with me, just do me the courtesy of hearing the full point before you demolish me with facts and logic. Also, I imagine this topic is going to feel really weird for trans men watching. Because this discussion often treats men and maleness as a monolith, but trans guys have a way different experience of masculinity than cis guys do. Anytime people are arguing about what to do- Ah! By the way, Capo with the tier 2 sub, thank you so very much. The Finster drama reminds me of a Callian Conrad quote. If you define yourself by your oppression, you need to continue to be oppressed in order to continue to exist. True! Don't define yourself by your- your, your oppression, and thank you very much, Capo. Let's continue. You about the men. Trans men are always an afterthought, or even worse, made to feel like there's some kind of spin-off that doesn't count. So, to my trans brothers out there, I don't know how much of what I want to talk about will speak to your specific experience of masculinity. After all, I'm cis, 95% of the guys in my life are too. But I do have plans for you later in the video, so hang in there. Anyway, enough fiddle fucking around. Let's get into it. Recently, a man named Andrew Tate was arrested for allegedly being involved in rape and human trafficking. He's often bragged about allegedly emotionally manipulating women into sex work, and several women have come forward to press charges against him. By the way, uh, if you ever have any doubts about the guilt of Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate had literally made videos about about he didn't call it how to be a pimp, but he made a video about being a pimp. And in his video, he talks about how you need to get women to work for you and you need to get them to give you all of the money that they make, all of it. None gets kept to them, they give it all to you and then if you want to, you pay it back to them. It is totally insane. The man is like, in my opinion, the most obviously guilty guy you can possibly imagine, but I guess we're gonna find out, right? Because again, all of these allegations, all all of these things are just alleges. Maybe he was just goofing around and playing a character, but I don't think so. Unfortunately for the world. Oh wait, he does refer to himself as a pimp in that video? Well, there you have it. I didn't know he actually did that. World, Andrew Tate is a big name in what you might call the manosphere. The uh, loose confederation of blogs, websites, video channels, and influencers all centered around men, men's issues, male empowerment, and so on. After Tate's arrest, people were reflecting upon his influence among men, particularly young men in their teens and early 20s, and the question naturally arose, why was his brand so attractive to young guys all around the world? Or, more to the point, what can be done about young men getting radicalized by a manosphere that 
disregards women's issues, is frequently hostile to queer and disabled people, and is often animated by this smoldering love of violence, often associated with rape threats, death threats, doxing, harassment campaigns, and even the occasional mass shooting. And at least on my side of the internet, a couple factions began to form. One faction claimed that men were in crisis, that men's issues were being ignored, that men felt humiliated and alienated from the social justice-minded left, and that we needed to do more to bring them in, that we should be addressing the loneliness crisis and the hurtful experience of losing status. We should be creating spaces for men to air their grievances without fear of being ridiculed or being branded a bigot for just asking honest questions. They said that the right-wing manosphere was chock full of guys presenting themselves as male role models here to show you how to be a real man, and that the left needed their own version of that with a more positive take on masculinity. In short, this faction claimed that the left was failing men, and in so doing, ceding ground for right-wingers to come scoop them up with promises of a return to glory. This faction was met with... I think this is a very, uh, I think this is a very charitable... Uh, interpretation, and I think that's probably a good starting point. Uh, I I would point out generally. I would point out the fact that the first tweet in this wasn't just saying that the men that the left was failing men, but also that the left was cre was responsible for creating the MRA movement by having bad takes, which is just so. That's part of, and I've mentioned this in my video about this topic, which is the idea that like the framing was was totally ruined from the absolute get go. The first tweet that struck this all off was just blatantly wrong, and from there, a bunch of people took up different positions, and then they were battling simultaneously over the original position and the new one. But yeah, wait, what? I didn't see that in the tweet. In the original tweet, it said. Hold on, I can just, oh my god, like, uh, oh, I brought it up, but I can, I can bring it up, hold on. I can bring it up again. I went over this in my video that I did about it, but, you know, let me just make sure. Here we go. Here's the original tweet, hold on. The reason young men flock to alt-right MRA movements is because the left gives brain-dead advice to young men. Do you see what I'm saying? The reason, the reason young men flock to the MRA movements is because the left gives brain dead advice to young men. That's what, it means what it says. It, it means like, right? Like he's making an argument that the MRA movements are being flocked to because the left gives bad advice, which is ridiculously incorrect. So anyway, let's continue. I just wanted to make sure that you understand that I'm not I'm not misrepresenting that argument. That was the original argument that started this entire thing off. It was a terrible, a terrible, terrible way to start a discourse. Let's continue. Vehement backlash from another group that claimed that men were not entitled to coddling by the communities that they've been harming. We live in a patriarchy that centers men's feelings in everything. The opposing side said that men need to take responsibility for their own growth and that telling, say, left-wing women that they're not doing enough for men is reinforcing the harmful entitlement that is animating male violence in the first place. This group said that men's problems come from capitalism and patriarchy and that the left should be focused on destroying those systems, not centering men as victims, and certainly not accommodating individual men who make the community feel unsafe because they won't listen to women, queer people, disabled people, and so on. This group said that the left doesn't need guys presenting themselves as male role models because men need to learn from lots of sources, not just other men, and besides that, there's no shortage of left-wing men making content out there. Also, a very charitable interpretation. I will say that there were people making all of the arguments that he mentioned, but a lot of the people who were responding, especially people who were responding to Vosh, were not making this argument uh, as well as he represents. However, I do appreciate that dang dad basically steel manning both positions as we're going into this. Um, when I talked about this, I, I, 
said that I don't think there were two sides. I think there were like six or more sides and all of those were just clashing into each other and sort of just slashing out and bashing into each other randomly. Nobody was really responding to anyone uh, in a one-to-one -one nature. There was this sort of, I am I'm attacking a conglomerate. Each person was attacking a conglomerate that included people that weren't making arguments that they said they were. Very messy, very confusing. However, I do think that this is the way to get to the bottom of what the actual concerns are. Um, even if it's, uh, even if it, uh, even if it is a, a, a steel man version. Uh, also, I just think that the way that he frames this, there's some very interesting things to talk about, but let's continue the video. Well, as someone whose channel is named after a, uh, quintessentially male role, I followed this discourse with some interest. As many of you know, I'm somebody who grew up very conservative and I believed a lot of harmful things for a long time. I used to be the thing the no coddle faction is upset with and have since become the thing that the male outreach faction wants to see more of. So which side am I on? Would that it were so simple. 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 I'm trying to say that, Mr. Lorenz. I'm going to tell you what I believe, but I think it goes without saying, I'm just one guy. Retcon404 says, I just subbed to this guy. Based! That dang dad is fucking awesome. And uh, I... I would love to see more people subscribe to his channel because unironically, I think that he talks about these issues with an incredible amount of, uh, of compassion and uh, insight. Uh, he, in my experience, does not engage in any of the sort of meaningless uh, uh, bravado uh, that some people engage with. Instead, he does actually aim to tackle the issues and he seems to be mostly interested in helping people, which is awesome to me. Let's continue. Oh yeah, you should watch that retcon. It's really good. We watched his one about uh, how cop how cop training basically gave him PTSD. Uh, it's a really, really good video. Absolutely. I, ca I cannot recommend that video enough. It's very good. I have an extremely narrow experience in the world and there's a lot of male experiences that I can't speak to. I didn't play football. I've never been hunting. I've never been sexually abused by an older woman and had everybody treat it like sexy mischief. I've never been an Asian man being mistreated on dating sites. I was never a Muslim man living in the wake of 9-11. I was never a gay teen boy kicked out of his house and doing whatever it takes to survive. And I was never a black 10-year-old boy with a police officer pointing a gun in his face. There is no definitive male experience and I don't claim to represent even the half of it. Remember, you all remember when I, do you all remember the video I did about male socialization? Do you guys remember that video? Uh, where that was the ex exact argument that I made, that the idea of male socialization is already a weak premise because there is no single male experience. Even if there are some similarities, there are still an enormous diversity of men's experiences, of male experiences. So the idea that there is this thing called male socialization is just absurd. I'm really, really happy that he touched on this. Oh, I'm really happy that he touched on that. Here's what I think. I do believe that cisgender men, particularly in the United States, particularly straight men, particularly younger men are having a tough time. I believe that many men are suffering. They're lonely. They're struggling financially. The future doesn't feel like it's full of promise anymore. There's expectations foisted on them that they've never opted into. And everyone treats men as if they don't need any help, as if it's their job to just suck it up and deal with it. Do we live in a world built on patriarchy, built on protecting male power, built on protecting male ego? Undisputably. Do we live in a world where men have been the default human for centuries, where things are built for male bodies and organized to maximize male success? Yeah, buddy. Ironically, I believe this is why many men are suffering. Because while the system has been built by men and for men, Many individual men are getting crushed by it and made to feel that this is evidence of their unworthy- BASED! Yeah, so on point! So fucking on point! The, you have to remember that when people say that the world was built for men, it, I, and I brought this up in my male socialization video as well, that it's built for a certain type of man. 
and and actually I made a joke about this earlier about how conservatives always they conservatives say that um, the world is separated into like alpha and beta men and they they revile beta men even though they believe that the natural the natural order of the world according to conservatives is that some men are meant to be alphas and some men are meant to be betas and they hate them why do you have to hate them if it's natural why would you why would that why is that the way that it functions it makes no sense and the real reason is because it's not about it's not about the natural order it's about dominance it's about saying some people are supposed to be better than other people that's the real reason but uh when the reason why that connects here is because the the people who are self-stylized alphas the the men who take over by force some of them are literal psychopaths some of them have no sense of empathy they don't believe in empathizing with their wife and kids they believe that power is all that matters they build the world for men who are like them not other men not all men anyway let's continue Venus. Within the patriarchy, masculinity is something fragile, something that can be built up and squandered, something that can be bestowed and taken away. Within the patriarchy, masculinity is something that must be policed and forced, guarded and surveilled. Quick. Dexterity M9 says, as a former dude, now Demi Boy, who was, who was probably an incel at one point and was a very cringe dude, let's just say, this discourse has been very hard for me since the only way that I got out of it was a lefty friend from Discord and it took years for me to, better, to, to get better. It pains me that so many men are just left behind and are hurting and I just wish we had all the answers. Uh, I wish we had all the answers too uh, and uh, I, 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 I just want to be clear. I, I don't know every single answer, but what I do know is that the discourse, the way that it unfolded is not the answer. Um, and also uh, something else that is not the answer is attempting to pressure, uh, attempting to pressure people, um, like say trans people or women, uh, into being the, into being basically the front line to try and reach people like that. They can't. Um, most most of the time, it's not trans women, it's not women who are able to reach people like that. It's other guys, it's lefty guys who are often able to do that. So uh, uh, we, we just need to be careful in how we uh, address that issue because I do agree it's an issue that needs to be addressed. I do think that there are a lot of guys who are just lost and that's it. They're just simply lost and uh, and they should be helped. They should be brought in to a place that's warm and that can be fulfilling to them, that can help them grow as a person. But the answer isn't yelling, isn't really broadly yelling at other people to do it. There has to be like a real approach here and it's not an easy answer. Retcon404 says, I've literally had someone tell me toxic masculinity doesn't exist while simultaneously telling me I need to cut my hair. Isn't that fucked up? Toxic masculinity is absolutely a real thing. It's the idea that men can only be one way, that basically the only for, like types of men is like uh, the, the a soldier, a policeman, an iron worker, or a dead guy. And that is a absolutely fucked up way of looking at the world. It's a fucked up thing to put men through. It's a fucked up thing to subject women to. It's bad for the entire world. Yeah. Yeah, businessman or hobo. <laughs> in a patriarchy, if you're not being a man in the correct way, you lose out on access go. to the privileges and benefits that the system was hoarding for you. But what is masculinity? It can't be purely biological because otherwise, how could it be reinforced or taken away? If it was purely biological, men wouldn't have to prove their manliness or protect it. In the interest of time and simplicity, I am not going to attempt to drop some gender theory into the mix. Longtime fans of the channel know I'm a butler bro, if you know you know. Instead, I'm going to tell you my theory of what masculinity isn't. First and foremost, masculinity isn't a disease, it's not a character defect, it's not a soul sickness, it's not something to be ashamed of and not True. something to be stamped out of people. But more to my main point, there's something that masculinity is being confused with, often intentionally by bad actors online, and this confusion, this lie about masculinity, is making men fucking miserable. Are you ready? Masculinity is not control.
When I think back on the informal male education that I received from men in my family, men in my childhood churches, male friends, and men on talk radio thinking the big deep thoughts, again and again I come back to the idea that to be a good man, a proper man, is to be in control. Sometimes. There you go. This is the, that is the message that is, that is blasted out by the right. They're, the right wing idea of what a man is, is whoever is dominant. Like I was just talking about with the whole beta alpha thing, they say that there's such a thing as a beta male. They don't see those people as men. They see them as beta males. They see them as males, soy boys, whatever. Those aren't men to them. In their mind, a man is somebody who is either aspirationally or currently dominating someone else. In their mind, dominance is all that matters. That is the the main thing. That is the foundation of right-wing manhood. It is taught in every church in America. It is taught on every right-wing radio station in America. It is blasted out by, by fathers and schools. It is terrible. Retcon says, this is a little off topic, but when I worked at a liquor store, I had a coworker make fun of a customer who was walking around with a man bun while having his hair tied up himself. And his excuse was that the other guy's man bun was too high up. That is, that is exact, uh, just, ooh, wow. That is, uh, that is such a deep level of, uh, that is such a deep level of gender policing. So many, so many people participate in policing of gender without even realizing it without even ever realizing it. Sometimes this is inward focused. A real man is in control of his emotions, in control of his passions. He's the master of his body, pushing it to feats of strength. He is the master of his mind, unwavering, unbending, unbroken. Other times this is outward focused. A real man is in control of his environment. He's the life of the party, making everyone laugh. The suave lover, enticing the one he desires. The respected boss. The breadwinning husband. The protector of his domain. The wise captain steering the ship. If I'm a man and it's my duty to maximize my masculinity, then it must be my duty to take control. I must be entitled to control. And here's the funny thing about control. It's a finite resource. There's only so much to go around, particularly when it comes to external control. For some to have it, others must not. So if I don't have it, I gotta go get it. And if I do have it, someone might try to take it from me and I have to be stronger, richer, and more powerful, or at least look like I am so that I'm not an easy target. And unfortunately, somewhere along the way, men picked up the idea that while being too emotional wasn't manly, there was one emotion that didn't really count against you, especially if someone was trying to target you. Anger. When a man sees injustice, when a man sees someone taking something that doesn't belong to them, when someone is threatening a man's castle, the only proper response is righteous anger. I am someone who personally struggles with anger. It ignites in me almost instantly, like oily rags just spontaneously combusting in an old warehouse. And as I've spent time reflecting on the side of myself, I've come to realize that what makes me explode is when I feel like I'm not in control of a situation, when I feel powerless. To be angry, to smash something, to yell or to slam a door, this feels like taking control back. What's that IKEA bookshelf? You don't want to assemble easily? Well, now you're a pile of rubble. How do you like that? Fuck you, I win. So where am I going with this? To go back to our two debating factions from earlier, I agree with the male outreach faction that many men are in crisis. Cisgender straight men are watching the world change before their eyes as many institutions explicitly state their desire to diminish the power and influence of cisgender straight men. And the days where an unremarkable guy from a small town could get a decent union job right out of high school, get married almost by default, and afford a house and three kids on a single salary, oh baby, those days are long dead. Thanks to globalization and automation, employers have more options. And now that women are allowed to have, you know, credit cards and bank accounts and careers and dating apps, potential mates have more options too. We still live in a capitalist patriarchy and rich men still control everything, but many individual men feel more powerless than ever and at a time where no one has much sympathy for them. And boys, I know that sucks. Legitimately, that sucks. 
But there's a reason people aren't showing very much sympathy and you have to get your head around it. That powerlessness that you feel is something that everybody else has been feeling for a long time. I'm just, just before he said this line, I was just thinking that. I was just thinking about the fact that no one has sympathy for anyone anymore. We live in a society that is that is that is emotionally uh, empathetically bankrupt. We have we live in a society that constantly encourages us to the to 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 only have compassion towards those who rule us. A society that teaches us to have no, that basically teaches us that the only way to succeed is to become a a psychopath, to to literally cut out all emotions so that you are not disturbed in your pursuit of success, success whatever that means. Um, you see this all throughout people's workplaces. You see this throughout the way that schooling operates, that schooling is all about teaching you to pursue a career, that schooling is all about achieving over other people, achieving higher than other people, um, that it, it, it permeates every aspect of American society. And most capitalist societies fall into this because in a society of perpetual uh, profit, in a society uh, that demands perpetual growth of businesses, then obviously it is going to reward people who behave like cutthroats. Yeah, it's the temporary, yeah, exactly. As Eddie says, it's the temporarily embarrassed millionaire mindset and it makes no one have any sympathy or empathy for anyone else, even though we should. It's not, and and it, it does hurt, it hurts everyone, but the reasons aren't just, um, the reasons aren't just, uh, uh, you know, directed at men alone. It's our, it's a society-wide issue. That sense of being ignored, passed over, stepped on, disregarded, disrespected, and devalued. How do you think women have been feeling? How do you think queer and trans people have been feeling? And are you sitting there saying, but that's not my fault? You're right, it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility to deal with the world that you and I have inherited. And this is where I agree with the no coddling faction because they're right. The systems making men miserable today are the same ones that have been making everyone miserable since forever. Boys, you are suffering under systems of domination. They used to work better for you and now they don't. The problem is the domination, not your decreasing access to it. The solution to your unhappiness and your insecurity is to dismantle these systems, not rebuild them. They're just gonna fuck you again. Because remember, the lie that you've been fed about masculinity is that it hinges on individual dominance, on control. Control which is finite, which not everyone can have, and which is always being threatened or challenged. There is another resource that keeps people safe, that builds people up, that gets hard work done, and not only is it not a finite resource, it actually works better the more people that have it. It's called solidarity. Solidarity can mean a lot of things, but for our purposes, it is a social relationship that values you not because you're strong or smart or funny or handsome or rich, not for what you can do, but because of what you are and will always be. A fellow human who needs food, clothing, shelter, autonomy, and dignity. The lie Damn, you've been so sold based. about masculinity tells you that you must always be on guard, always ready to take, always ready to fight, that your value as a man is fragile and changeable and forever at risk. Solidarity says that's bullshit. Your value as a man, as a human, is eternal. You don't have to earn your dignity. You were worthy of it the day you were born. So returning to the big debate, this is why I reject the notion that the broadly defined left doesn't care about men's issues and doesn't provide male role models to help guide young men towards healthier paths. We care, but we recognize that the issues men are experiencing are part of a larger network of oppressive forces. And the male creators and influencers doing the very best work, in my opinion, understand this key truth. The people who know the most about surviving and thriving against those oppressive forces are the ones that have been fighting them the longest. Racialized people, indigenous people, queer people, disabled people, and so on. The male creators doing the best work know that we have a lot of lessons to learn about solidarity, how to do it, how to magnify it, how to preserve it, and that the people who can teach us the most about solidarity are the ones who it has been keeping alive for centuries. Boys, if you're straight and cis and white, your oppression and your pain matters. But in the grand scheme of solidarity politics, 
you're the new kid and you would be wise to link up with people who already have the lay of the land and listen to them. And sometimes that means closing your word hole for a while and just marinating on what they've told you. Even when it stings, even when it feels extreme, even when it feels like they aren't considering your unique trials and tribulations. Men are not always great at sitting with discomfort, but take it from me, sometimes that's where life-changing lessons are hiding. But even though I think that men need to learn from non-men, I understand the male impulse to seek out role models and heroes to aspire to. So when I think about some of the seasoned cis guys that I admire in the left or left adjacent creator community, I think about people like Bo of the Fifth Column, a military veteran, Legal Kim Chi, a lawyer who loves tabletop RPGs, Damon Garcia, a socialist Christian, FD Signifier, a black media... I really like, I really like Damon Garcia. Uh, the stuff that I've seen of Damon Gar Garcia is super, super interesting. Uh, even though I have a ton of critiques of Christianity, it's so interesting to see uh, him talk about Christianity from a totally different lens. And while I have disagreements with FD Signifier, especially with regard to how he handled the videos that were made about Xander Hall, I still think that FD Signifier makes some really, really great videos. Critic and essays. Nuts, F, listen, Nuts says FD Signifier is cringe. Yeah, but but you also have to remember that people aren't only one thing. People can make good videos and also do some cringe things on social media. Uh, yeah. I, I do, I, I, there's a reason why I said that I like, I like a lot of his videos, but that I don't agree with the way that he handled the Zan situation. In fact, I very explicitly said that I think that he handled it very poorly and that he joined in circling the wagons around DJ Mule, who is a sloppy piece of shit. Mike Rignetta, tabletop GM and filmmaker, Steven Spawn, gaming accessibility critic, or Dan Olson, an indie documentarian. To Dan Olson is so based! Dan Olson is so based! Let's continue. To say nothing of like 50 other guys I could have named doing amazing work on YouTube and elsewhere. Mm. Yes! Yes! Jacob Geller! Woo! Yeah, baby! But let's not stop there because I wanna go back to something I said earlier. Even though men have been sold a lie about masculinity, masculinity in and of itself is not toxic, it's not diseased, it's not depraved, and it's not something to hate. So yes, you can learn about masculinity from men who have worked to unlearn the harmful messages they've been told, but I think there's a group of men with invaluable insight on this topic, and it's a group of men who almost never get handed the mic. Of course, it's trans men. Who is more equipped True! to lead a conversation about healthy, positive masculinity than men who have had to fight tooth and nail to live it? As a mentor with a queer teen outreach, I know trans men of all ages as well as non-binary people trying to work out whether they might be men in real time. And you know what? Trans men in chat, shout out! All right, can we get some, can we get some K comrades for all the trans men in chat? Let's do it. K comrades for the trans men in chat. They all seem to have in common. None of them act like their masculinity entitles them to domination and control in our spaces. You know what else they seem to have in common? None of them have decided that their masculinity prevents them from being vulnerable within our community or prevents them from listening with humility and curiosity. I hope it's fair for me to say that no group of men on the planet has put more thought, reflection, and intentionality towards being a man than trans men have. And I suspect many of them cherish and rejoice in masculinity much more powerfully than anyone in the manosphere. The Andrew Tates of the world project happiness, but deep down you can feel the insecurity eating away at them. You can. These are miserable people, terrified of being exposed, terrified of not measuring up, terrified that other men are going to dominate them and that they're going to deserve it because they weren't manly enough. And you want to pay them thousands of dollars to teach you to be as scared and as insecure as they are, and just as phony? I have a better idea, and it won't cost you anything. Boot up your personal computer, activate your modem, double-click on Netscape Navigator, and navigate your ass on over to the fantastic Mr. Fox's channel and watch his video on positive masculinity. And then, keep going. By the way, this right here... This right here, what we're talking about, is part of the reason I got so annoyed at the faction of people who were claiming that the left is actively hostile to men or whatever. Because there are so fucking many 
extremely detailed, extremely careful, extremely compassionate, compassionate videos made by leftists about men, often by trans men out there that are totally ignored. And ignoring them is a disservice to the people who are working hard right now. Let's continue. To the men watching this, especially to the conservative men that made it this far, I want to be crystal clear about this. I want you to be a man, the best kind of man you can be. And while I can't speak for every single person who identifies as left wing, I can tell you that the vast majority of people that I know don't want to erase your manhood. Trust me, some of us enjoy manhood quite a bit. We want to erase the system that is lying to you about what that manhood is and means. The system using that lie against you to keep a handful of people rich and powerful at the expense of everyone else, including you. And boys, that means we are asking you to let go of things that you have been tightly clutching to your chest since you could walk. And yes, that is going to feel uncomfortable for a lot of you. Your body doesn't know how to untense. Your brain doesn't know how not to be afraid, how to stop competing. But unfortunately, we can't take your hand if you're still clinging to domination, still clinging to control. But our hand is outstretched, and you can take it when you're ready. Anyway, to bring it back to the debate we've been discussing one last time, I think this is the fundamental misunderstanding that some people are having. The male outreach faction is correct. There is a vast network of right-wing influencers out there promising to teach boys the secret rituals that can unlock true masculinity for them. And there isn't really a non-toxic left-wing version of that kind of content. But this critique misses a key point, one made brilliantly by Mr. Fox. Because positive masculinity is whatever we want it to be. It is what men build together and model for boys to give them a brighter, happier future. The real secret to true masculinity is that there is no true masculinity. There is no one right way to be a man. Masculinity can be whatever men want it to be. It can be an engine of solidarity and love rather than this depressing panopticon prison of insecurity. Unfortunately, a lot of men aren't ready to hear that because it's abstract and it's hard and it's open-ended. The right wing grift machine has easy answers. Buy a big cigar, buy a big gun, buy expensive scotch, buy this diaper bag that looks like military crap, buy a gym membership, buy a big truck, buy this aggressive t-shirt, and buy this seminar that shows you how to walk around cock first and bully other men and cajole women into sex. The alternative left wing vision of masculinity doesn't have anything for you to buy. There's no book of rules for boys because there's no gender police to enforce them because masculinity is what you create, not what you obey. I don't want to help you be a good man so much as I want to help you be good, man. And the idea that the left's only message for men is that they aren't entitled to sex and dates and just have to accept dying alone is, I'm sorry, asinine. The left's message for men is that autonomy and dignity is everyone's right, including theirs, and that true solidarity and true companionship and true intimacy can only be achieved when autonomy and dignity is respected by all parties. I once heard a speaker at a conference say, people don't fear change, they fear loss. And I absolutely believe that many young and not so young men today are afraid they are losing status, losing opportunities, losing agency. They've been immersed in a system of domination with winners and losers. And it looks like society is trying to help other people besides them win. Metcon404 says, I have had so many friends that outwardly act like a stereotypical dude bro, but then have a ton of actually super interesting hobbies and interests that they never talk about. It's really sad, actually. It's depressing. It's super sad. There's so many, I can speak to this too. I know so many guys who rep actively repress parts of themselves because they know that they will be punished if they let that part out. Because they can, and, and I want you to understand that uh, like there's a, there's, the policing of trans women plays into this very hard. When, when cis men see trans women getting harassed all the time for, for defying their, their, their gender assigned at birth, they know that they can't step out of line either. These things are interlocked. We are all in the same fucking fight against the same imperial fucking gender structure. It sucks and we have to fight it because it's torturing us all. It's torturing some of us worse than others, but it's torturing us all. 
What I and the rest of my comrades offer is not some nonsense about becoming an Epsilon male that can compete better, but rather an entirely different framework. We want to help them become someone who can cooperate with those who need the same things as them so that everyone can thrive. Boys, you have heard it said that you must fight for your piece of the pie. But I say unto you, we can make more pies. Bigger pies. Apple tarts. Moroccan pastilla. The works. We just have to do it together. And there's a place for you right here next to me. Make pie with me, won't you? Anyway, let's wrap this up. The script is a mess. If you're a content creator watching this, I hope it doesn't sound like me saying that we shouldn't address men's issues. Of course we should. I just reject the idea that we aren't already doing that. Many men are suffering because capitalism treats them like garbage and tries to keep them poor. Many men are suffering from racism constantly trying to scapegoat them and grind them down into a permanent underclass. And many men are suffering from ableism that excludes them from spaces and punishes them for their own bodies and minds. Trust me, the left is talking about these axes of oppression constantly. One of the benefits of solidarity politics is that it recognizes how powerful it is when diverse communities band together to take care of each other. And as somebody with a marketing background, I always advocate for having a variety of material that meets people at different stages in a buyer's journey from never heard of this to I'm all in. So by all means, let's have a diverse community of writers, thinkers, essayists, filmmakers, streamers, and content creators speaking to their passions and the unique ways that they bring to the table and speaking to the communities that they feel close to, including the community of straight cisgender men. And we certainly can't expect everybody who's been harmed by patriarchy and male violence to feel comfortable speaking directly to men or being in tight community with men right away. So if that's your calling, great, go and do. Let's just not pretend that we aren't trying to disrupt, dismantle, and destroy systems of oppression and domination. Let's not show men the uh, soft bigotry of low expectations by pretending that they aren't perfectly capable of understanding how these systems are harming them and making a mockery of their masculinity. And let's stop assuming that men Bro! cannot be expected to respect boundaries, keep people safe, or be held accountable in our communities. I'm living proof. Men can get their shit together without being pandered to. Ooh, hot damn, that was a lot. I think the main reason I wanted to weigh in is because I see friends on both sides arguing past each other, and I'm hoping maybe I can reframe this discussion a little so that we're at least all talking about the same thing. I don't expect everybody to agree instantly. I just hate seeing arguments where it feels like both sides haven't even agreed on what the argument is about. Anyway, also what true. do you think? Which side are you on? What do you believe? What's to be done with these suspicious men characters? Is there a gap in leftist content that you believe we need to fill that can help young men without downplaying their responsibility to respect the dignity and autonomy of others? Or alternatively, who do you think is producing good content for younger guys out there? Let us know in the comments. And uh, speaking of setting boundaries, you can disagree and debate down there, but if I see anybody getting nasty about females or whatever, it's off to the shadow zone with you. Anyway, if you made it this far, especially if this is your first time here, thank you for spending time with me and for navigating all these choppy waters. Please give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't, and if you think this is a worthwhile addition to the discourse, please share this video with people that you think might be interested. Thank you for trusting me with your time. I really appreciate getting to work out some of this complicated stuff with you. I should have something fun for my next video, barring some newer, spicier, intra-left kerfuffle. Hope to see you then. Have a good night. Damn. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? That there were people out here who were at, who who uh who, who actively avoided the toxic Twitter discourse in order to actually address the questions at hand. That dang dad once again showing us how it's done. Uh uh if you enjoyed this video, I am going to drop a link. Boop 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 right there. Okay? Go press like and go leave a comment, leave some love from the imps, leave some love from mama's community, whatever you want to do. Nuts says, this is simply one of the best videos you've reacted to in a long time. Well, thank you. Uh, I, 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 I know how to choose them, what can I say? Retcon says, that was very nice. A Causality says, this was very reasonable, I definitely appreciated this. Gayfesh says, b b b b based Uh, yeah, uh, this, this,
This video I really liked a lot. Uh, I feel like it went deeper even than my video did, whereas mine was mostly pointing out how the uh, discourse turned toxic and why that's bad for us. This really, really tackled the issue very directly, and I really like that. I have a lot of respect for that dang dad. Um, uh, both of the videos of his that we've react to on this channel have been fantastic. And what's more is that uh, I've I've received constant feedback from uh, from imps in the community on the videos in the comments that they really like uh, that dang dad's videos. Um, and I, I think there's a reason for that. I think it's because he's speaking to truth. And uh, yeah, uh, there's so much that he touched on that was just so on point the the fact that that masculinity is ends up being a prison to uh basically all men but especially men who who, who don't who don't uh aim to constantly be a domineering uh uh a freak in every aspect of their life um men who men who don't uh who don't take the path of stopping stopping having emotions towards their wife and kids um, that that is like, I mean, uh, in, in, when I was talking about the discourse originally, we reacted to that little Joel video where he talks about the manosphere tweet that where this manosphere account is literally telling people stop having feelings towards your, your w wife and kids. They will use that to manipulate you. You will lose power and control if you have emotions towards your kids because they will make you feel bad. And it's like, what kind of a world do these people believe in? Well, and the answer is a world where people who cut out all of their feeling, uh, all of their the feeling parts of their brain, people who become hollow automatons are the ones uh, who succeed in that system. And that is not a su su system that is good for humans. It is not a system that is successful or happy or anything. It only succeeds at consolidating power into the hands of a few. So, yeah. Elves in the Anomaly with the $2, thank you very much, says, messaging is super important in this topic. Yes, it is. It is incredibly important. This is a uh, this is one of those topics where you have to be very careful what you say. Uh, do you guys remember how I mentioned um, in the past, and maybe you don't, maybe, maybe some of you weren't around for this, but I once did a video uh, where I said that um, uh, there's a topic that you have to be very, very careful about no matter who you are. Uh, but especially if you're a leftist, and that is the Israel-Palestine issue. And one of the reasons why you have to be careful if you want to be a responsible content creator is because the issue is so charged. There is so much, uh, there is so much uh, prejudice and there is so much baggage built into it that if you're not careful, you can unintentionally support uh, or at least contribute to uh, uh, all kinds of terrible things. You can accidentally, even if your position is critiquing Israel, you can accidentally jump onto narratives that are anti-Semitic, even though even if your critique is not anti-Semitic in and of itself. Um, so you have to be careful around these issues or else it just makes it things worse. Uh, and this is another one. Uh, 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 I, I think this is one of those issues where you need to be very careful in your messaging. Um, uh, going around and and being flippant is not going to help you uh, do anything. It's not going to move things forward. It's only going to leave the door open for exploitation by our opponents. Awesome Jess twenty three says, "I am a, I am Brazilian, and the constant suppression of my feelings, even as I've grown and tried to be more open or, or tried to cry more and show vulnerability more and really try to dig into myself. Now living as a woman with more knowledge than many men in my life and many more women in my life actually taught me something that's really toxic. Having someone like Finster is unthinkable, unacceptable. Talking to my mom about it was pretty surreal. I'm really sorry to hear that. Yeah, the repression is absolutely insane. We have absolutely." disgusting uh, gender standards in our country and they are like knives that dig into all of us. They punish all of us. They are designed to punish us in such a way that we remain subservient to people who are already in power, to people who are already rich and already rule over us. We have to cast them off and we have to remember who our actual enemies are in this struggle.
Thank you all for watching this video from That Dang Dad. I really wanted to react to it because, uh, as you all know, Mama always puts her money where her mouth is. I don't want to just say that we should have more productive conversations about gender. I don't want to just say that we should do better. I want to show everyone what it looks like to do better. I want to show everyone what it looks like to tackle this issue in a responsible manner. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, and uh, I hope you will appreciate that mama never misses. Anyway, end of segment. Hell yeah.